So I'm here in Capitol Reef National Park in Utah, and I'm uh, hiking up this trail to an overlook. It's about a two mile trail, and it's up some uh, pretty steep terrain to start out with, and then I think it kind of levels off. But uh, it's a pretty nice day. We've got some nice clouds in the sky. Not too many as I was hoping for, but we still do have a decent amount, like some nice light wispy ones that'll hopefully catch some light tonight. And uh, also in today's video, I wanna go over the two lenses that I use for landscape photography. So let's go and hopefully get an image. So this hike here is pretty spectacular so far. I got up into this kind of open plateau area and uh, there's a bunch of compositions because I have this whole background here, these nice cliff faces, and these are facing the uh, east. So the sun's going to kind of set that way in the west and it'll illuminate all these right at sunset and then hopefully the clouds will catch some nice light. So I've got amazing backdrops and uh, now all I gotta really do is find foreground interest, but I still have a ways to go. I'm maybe only about a quarter way done with the hike because it's still gonna go up some more. And as I get higher, it's gonna be nicer because then uh, I'll be able to see more of these cliffs over here, which I'm looking forward to, and uh, be able to get some nice, interesting images, hopefully. Yeah, and also even more cliffs this way, just all around me, the nice spectacular uh, reddish tan and also the grays and deep reds of the Capitol Reef National Park here. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going until uh, the overlook because I think it goes flat for a bit like I've been walking now and then it kind of goes steep again. And it's somewhere that way. I'm not exactly sure where, but uh, yeah, I should be able to get a nice good look of the area. And there are a bunch of these green trees that are kind of set apart from each other, which should be good foreground interest. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep hiking in that trail and I'm still gonna look for compositions on the way of the overlook. And if I find something pretty spectacular before I get there, then I'll stop and wait until sunset. But I still have about three hours until sunset, so I have plenty of time, um, no rush whatsoever. I allowed myself plenty of time because I really wanna have a nice composition set and get a nice image tonight because it is some pretty nice conditions. Hopefully more of the clouds blow in this way, but that's the way the wind is blowing and there is some clouds to the west. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some nice conditions for sunset and be able to get a nice picture. I uh, finally decided to shoot in 4K and uh, I'm no longer using the Canon M50. I'm using my uh, Nikon D500 um, just because I had the extra camera and I'm like, well, uh, I'd be a little bit better than the M50, so I decided to give it a shot. But the only thing that's pretty terrible about shooting with the D500 is the autofocus is completely useless. Um, I've just been manually focusing with it because when I use the autofocus, it keeps throwing off focus and it kept ruining a lot of my shots. So I just manually focus. And also I don't have a filter for it, so I've had to use a pretty uh, low aperture. So I'm shooting at sometimes even f16 to f20. So hopefully the video looks all right, but uh, hopefully the 4K will come through and look a little bit better. And then I am obviously in Utah, um, as I stated before, as I spent the winter in uh, Yellowstone National Park working seasonally. And uh, now it's March and the spring and I'm here in Utah where I'm going to stay for three weeks before I'm going to head north where I'm going to work the summer in Alaska, which I'm pretty excited about going up to Alaska. I'm going to drive the whole way there. And I'm going to give myself two weeks. So um, uh, yeah, spending five months in Alaska should give me plenty of opportunities for photography, especially wildlife photography. I really want to get some good pictures of uh, moose, caribou, and bears, and also the scenery. I'll be working at Denali State Park, and I'll have nice views of the mountains, so hopefully I'll be able to get some spectacular portfolio images there. So I made it mostly to the top here, Whew, and I'm still catching my breath because it was about a thousand foot elevation gain. Um, I still think it goes up just a little bit further and uh, has a bigger lookout, but this is as far as I'm going to go because I found this area that'd be great to photograph. That's we have these uh, two trees right here that are uh, pretty much by themselves, which is nice because we have all this rock which makes them stand out. And we have in the background these wonderful cliff faces with all the reds and grays and nice colors. And then over here, we have this big uh, rock that's pretty distinguished and uh, also looks pretty dramatic. Um, now, I'm really not sure what I'm going to do for a composition because I kind of framed up a couple of them and I do like these two trees together with that in the background. 
and I also like this rock with that in the background. Um, so I guess I'll have to see. So I'm just gonna kind of get out my camera, look around, fine tune the composition. We still have more than enough uh, time until sunset, but right behind me there is a hill. So I am gonna lose light in here and I'm gonna lose light on the trees and in the rock pretty soon. Um, so I am gonna kind of hurry a little bit. Then I do wanna take pictures of the light hitting the trees and the rock. And I'd like to do it where the trees and rock are just being illuminated, trees and or rock. Um, Cause as the sun will drop, it'll shine light on those a little bit longer than it will on the foreground here, these rocks on the ground. So I'd wanna try and get it with just light on there and light in the background. Um, so now I'm gonna get out my camera gear and then uh, start composing an image. And one of the two lenses that I do use for landscape photography would be the Nikon 16 to 35 F4. Now this is a great lens. It's a wide angle lens. And uh, I bought this one because, uh, well, I need a wide angle lens for landscape photography because you want a nice big field of view. I actually was able to get this on sale last year when I bought my Nikon D850 because I have the 10 to 24, 35 to 45 DX lens, which I'm actually using on the D500 right now to film myself. And that lens was just amazing. I used it for about five years and I got multiple portfolio shots from it because I really like the wide angle, especially when I'm doing landscapes. So uh, when I upgraded to the full frame, I decided to upgrade to a full frame model. And uh, this one isn't a 2.8, it's just a solid f4, which uh, is good enough for landscape photography because usually I shoot at f8 or f11, so I don't really need the 2.8. Um, but yeah, so far this lens has been great. It's got a 77 millimeter uh, screw-on filter ring, and yeah, no complaints whatsoever. So after looking at all the compositions, I decided that this one was the strongest. I'm gonna put this tree on the right of my frame, cutting out the other tree. Even though the other tree has a lot more interest, um, this one just fits with the left cliff side faces a little bit better. I can't make a composition pleasing with both of them in it. So yeah, I'm gonna set up my tripod, fine tune a composition, because the sun's about to go behind those hills pretty quick, so I wanna kinda hurry. So I did end up finding a pretty good composition here, so I'll kind of go over it with you. So I've got this tree on the right that's uh, very predominant in the scene, and it's balanced off by this uh, cliff to the left. And it took me a while to line up a composition I liked, just because there's so much rocks and such in the foreground that I had to get the perfect uh, zoom. And also to the right here, there's this other tree, so I had to cut it off just right, um, just to balance it out without the tree, the second tree and with the canyon on the left. But I'm pretty happy with this composition, actually. Um, yeah, and we do have some nice clouds right in the scene. The sun's just about to go down, and what I hope what happens as the sun goes down a little bit more is that uh, all this mid-ground here goes into shadow, which will give me more separation from the tree to the cliff there. Hopefully that happens, but I'm not too sure. Even if it doesn't, I think I'll still have a pretty decent composition. And I am going to add a uh, polarizer and a graduated filter, just to kind of balance the scene out a little bit. But I do want to be careful with the graduated filter, because as I push it down more, it'll darken the top of the tree, which I don't want to happen because it'll make the tree look a little bit odd, because the top of it will be dark, and then the bottom of it will be light. So I'm just very carefully positioning it so everything looks nice and balanced. All right, so the sun is dropping. It's right where I want it. And it did kind of uh, darken the midground. So I do have that separation with the tree. So the images are looking pretty good. And now I don't really need to focus stack, but I am. I'm just focusing uh, as close as I can to the camera. One fifth of a second, F11, ISO 64 taking an image, then I'm focusing on the base of the tree, same settings, then I'm focusing on the cliffs in the distance. Now I do really like this composition a lot, so what I did is I added a 6 sap filter just so I can get a little bit longer exposure, and uh, that made me do 13 seconds with f11 ISO 64. 
So not a crazy long exposure, but still it's just adding a little more um, uh, drama because the clouds are moving just a little bit. Now the second lens that I use for landscape photography is the Nikon 24 to 120 f4. Now uh, I took kind of a gamble on this lens. I was coming out to Yellowstone this past summer and I wanted uh, more of a zoom lens for landscapes and I was looking at the 24 to 70, the f2.8, but that was just a little bit more than I wanted to spend at the time. So I saw this one which was originally a kit lens for the D850 and they had them on Amazon uh, refurbished for only $500 which was like half off the new price. So I decided to take a gamble on it and buy it and it turns out this is an amazing lens. Um, I really love it. It's super sharp, uh, super versatile because it's such a wide zoom range and even I found it at 24 and 120 to be really sharp. And again, I don't need a 2.8 for landscape just because I shoot a lot of f.8 or f11. I like to want that wide depth of field with a landscape photography, so I don't need it wide open at 2.8. And to save an extra about $1,000, I think this was definitely worth it. And uh, yeah, because I really need a zoom lens and then a wide angle lens as well to complete the kit. I just wish this went a little bit uh, deeper, so I might eventually invest into a 70 to 200 just so I can have even more reach because I find 120 sometimes just isn't quite enough. But uh, yeah, so these are the two lenses I use for landscape photography, the uh, 24 to 120 f4 and the 16 to 35 f4. Both uh, Nikkor lenses and both pretty great lenses. And uh, the 16 to 35, I think I picked up for around 800 bucks and this one just 500 bucks. So they're relatively uh, inexpensive in regards to photography lenses. So I think I got pretty decent deals on them and it was definitely worth it. Now I've still been taking a few more images and I think I'm going to change up my composition. Um, I was going to wait until a uh, blue hour to shoot this shot because if the sky lights up it might be pretty dramatic. But what I'm finding is the foreground just getting way too flat with no light. So uh, even if the sky does light up, I don't think it'd be too pleasing of a composition because the foreground would just be too flat. So what I'm going to try and do is trying to simplify my composition. Um, so I think I'm going to move over to that tree over there and kind of line something up and maybe start shooting that and see if that'd be worth waiting for blue hour. So I'm coming over here to shoot this rock. Um, I did find another composition that I'm pretty happy with here. And we are getting some nice light in the clouds and some nice uh, light in the cliffs on the far distance. And since this rock is one all color, if it doesn't have uh, too much light on it and doesn't have too much detail, it's not too big of a deal. So I did take off my six stop filter and my graduated filter as well, just because uh, the light contrast isn't too much so it's not needed. And then what I have for my composition here, very simple. Um, I have these two rocks kind of on the right and this small rock centered. Then I have the big rock on the left there and it kind of leads you back into the whole scene. And we've got some really interesting layers and shapes and textures um, that it makes it look really nice. So I am pretty happy with this composition. I just kind of ran over here, put my tripod up and I'm like, wow, that works pretty good because um, the rock is nice and dramatic. So just gonna wait about the next 10 minutes until the sun goes down. And what I'm hoping happens is uh, the sky will catch some nice light and that light will reflect onto the canyon and kind of onto these rocks in the foreground here, making for a pretty interesting blue hour image. But uh, I guess we'll see, we'll just wait and see what we can get. And I'm shooting at uh, one one sixth of a second, F11, ISO 64. On um, this one I am kind of focus stacking just uh, as close as I can to the lens, about an eighth of the way up, then about a quarter of the way up, and then about halfway up, and then the background as well, just in case. Um, I'm pretty sure I can focus about a third of the way through the frame and it'll be sharp throughout, but I don't wanna take any chances because I am kind of liking this composition as well. So the moon has came up really quick over there, so I switched to my 24 to 120 lens, and it just has almost enough reach, but not quite. And I'm shooting it for one four hundredth of a second, f6.3, ISO 800, 
because I'd rather uh, get the shot at ISO 800 than not at all. It's turned out to be some pretty interesting images. So I don't think the light's gonna get any better. I think that's all for tonight. Now it's just getting uh, really blue and I'm really struggling with trying to uh, get the white balance right and it's looking a bit odd. Um, so yeah, I think the pictures I got a little bit earlier are quite better than what I'm gonna get for the rest of the night. So I think it's time to pack up and then head back. Um, yeah, I got about the two mile hike back in the dark, which shouldn't be too bad because uh, once you get kind of down this hill there, the trail's pretty well marked. Um, but yeah, it's starting to get a little cold, so I had a great day today. I uh, went over the two lenses I use for landscape photography, and I actually used both of them in this video, so I was able to get some pretty decent images. So yep, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.